Independence Square in Kiev. It bears the scars and the memorials of a conflict that has once again divided Ukraine. No one knows where this chapter will end, but it's just the latest in the nation's long and bloody history. To explain today's conflict, it helps to understand the lessons of the past. The old Slavic word for Ukraine you know, meant borderland, and what we've got here is the modern borders of Ukraine coming in here and obviously taking it at the moment Crimea um, but in 1918 the situation was quite different we had Austro-Hungary in the west of Ukraine and then uh, eventually after the First World War the Soviet Ukraine whatever way you look at it these are the people who are constantly um, stateless um, but have, have got a claim as a nation the story of Ukraine is in part the story of Christianity in Europe and this man, Saint Volodymyr, captured in this statue outside the Ukrainian Institute in London. It has become a shrine to those killed in Independence Square. In 988, he brought Christianity to Kiev, uh, 1,025 1, years ago. And Kiev then was, was the capital um, of what is now sort of the, the larger uh, post even Soviet Union. Moscow did not exist. Those remembered here join millions more who have died in Ukraine's conflict. This vast nation is a bridge between East and West and coveted by both. Conflict and blood is in the soil. As many as 10 million Ukrainians perished under Stalin's rule, starved in a famine caused by the forced collectivization of agriculture. This in a fertile land that became the breadbasket of Europe. Decimated by Soviet rule, the Nazis brought terror and division a decade later. When Hitler ordered German troops into Ukraine en route to Russia in 1941, they encircled Kiev. 600,000 men were killed or captured. Others fought with the Nazis, causing divisions that linger to this day. According to Russian estimates, by the end of the war, 1.6 million soldiers had died in Ukraine and more than 5 million civilians. Ukraine finally gained full independence from the Soviet Union in 1991 and with it the trappings of nationhood, like embassies around the world, including this one here in London. But independence has not brought settled democracy. And 23 years on, the country's in the grip of its second revolution. The new nation had a difficult birth. Its soldiers still wore Soviet uniforms as they trained to defend their country and the economy struggled with fuel and food in short supply. Despite this, Ukraine remained a huge nuclear power. When Ukraine became an independent state, it had the third largest nuclear arsenal in the world. It had, uh, the, its nuclear arsenal was bigger than that of France, the United Kingdom and China combined. It was massive. Ukraine gave it up voluntarily in exchange for assurances from the United States, from the UK and from Russia that its territorial integrity will be preserved. So one of the big issues we're seeing now really is that uh, the assurances that were made aren't being adhered to. The deal was signed by America, Russia and Ukraine, but stability at home has remained elusive. In 2004, this prompted the Orange Revolution. Following a rigged election, Viktor Yanukovych was removed without a shot being fired. After nationwide protests and a second election, Viktor Yushchenko was installed in his place. His disfigured face bore the scars of the campaign, which many believe were caused by poisoning. In 2010, Yanukovych won back the presidency. This election was cleaner, but his administration was not. Yulia Tymoshenko, defeated in the election, was jailed for abuse of power. The charge is widely viewed as politically motivated. Last month, Yanukovych was overthrown for a second time, but this time there was blood. The consequences for Ukraine are uncertain, but the pattern is wearily familiar. I mean, there's an old Ukrainian joke from the British diaspora that if you put four Ukrainians into a cellar for six months, they'll emerge with five political parties and six churches. And, you know, I think it suggests that this is, this is still not a settled, historically settled territory. In this most troubled state, history keeps repeating itself. Paul Kelso, Sky News.